Zamazenta is quite universally known to be the worst box art legend to be ever released in franchise history, and while that still might be the case, in recent months, it's been shooting up in usage within the OU tier, the most ever since its release back in Pokemon Home through DLC 1 and now. To really get a better understanding of why it's number 2 on usage, let us analyze the most popular set on Iron Defense and Body Press. But first, this video is sponsored by Mecha Japan. Mecha Japan is an online store that sells products from major Japanese licenses such as Pokemon, One Piece, Zelda, etc. They have more than 20,000 high quality products from Japan and the best part is, the prices are relatively nice and there is worldwide shipping. They were actually kind enough to send me some of the best quality Pokemon plushies that they have and even my very own mascot plushie of Fue Coco. I also got a couple others such as Dragapult, Greninja, etc. And they even sent over my favorite Pokemon of all time in Keldeo. This Charizard Sleeping One as well is one of my personal favorites and frankly, all of them felt amazing and incredible in quality as Pokemon plushies. Frankly, if you gave me one of these and like one of the Pokemon's plushies, I could probably never tell the difference. My videos here try to show the quality of them as best as possible for you guys, but generally, like guys, it really does get better than Mecha Japan. If you like to pick up your very own exclusive Pokemon plushies, over on Mecha Japan or are genuinely interested in other high quality Japanese collectibles, be sure to click the link down below and use code CHOMPY to get an additional $5 off orders over $80. I highly recommend for anyone wanting some customer friendly prices for some great Pokemon plushies or any other major Japanese licensed products. Anyways though, let's get back to the video. Firstly, one of the main reasons for its shot and viability is it comfortably handles a lot of the metagame, especially with its moveset. It's helped by the fact that it has a strong natural stat distribution, but still as a defensive Pokemon first, having its way with most of the tier makes it more of a nuisance to handle with. It can help take care of high power Pokemon such as Tusk, Gouging Fire, Gambit, Skarmory, Cloaking, etc. that are very valuable within the tier, which gives it more reason for Zamasun to depose itself defensively against these vaunted Pokemon. It's an easy plug and go wall that offers an offensive advantage as well because of its stat distribution. Getting to these EV distributions, one of these things that makes it very special is that speed investment. This actually allows it to outrun two main threats of Weavile and Skarmory pretty comfortable to which it can pick off later with body press. Furthermore, it can also outrun another threat in Adam and Dragonite even with one D-Dance up, which is pretty huge unless it's just spamming E-Speed anyways, to which I guess oh well. What really makes it unique though in its position is while most Pokemon are troublesome because of their elusivity with Terra capabilities as we've seen with the recent ban of Bulk Corona, Zamasenta has two Eevee splits from this set that really determine the offensive output and how an opponent should game plan for this Pokemon going through the battle. If it chooses to to invest more in HP, then Zamasu and the players will experience the more bulky version that can take a couple fairy type moves from its notable counters of Hatterene, Enamorous, Clefable, etc. The point is, it's really bulky, and this allows it to also hope to make its iron defense body press combination more potent as it has a higher survivability and can keep setting up. If it chooses to invest in attack though, its most notable other moves such as Crunch or Stone Edge can be severely more powerful to deal with other threats on the offensive side of things. It can two hit KO things like Goldango, deals massive amount of damage to Hatterene, Clefable with Heavy Slim, etc. It's really up to the team and the composition to formulate these Eevee spreads that it wants, but either way, it can really swing how Zamasenta plays out towards its competition. The rest of its Eevee spread though can be dumped into its physical defense stat to help boost its body press power towards its opponents. This really makes it very powerful and has really good Eevee stat distribution in general and its move pools as I've been alluding before has really been helping it. I've already touched on Crunch, Iron Defense and Body Press a lot, but other notable moves it likes to run are things like Heavy Sand for Fairy types and Stone Edge for those flying types that could really impede its body press sweeping capabilities such as Zapdos, Moltres, Dragonite to degree, etc. Another notable move is in the form of Roar, which can switch out many threats as stated before, set up Pokemon such as Dragonite, and even defensive Pokemon like Skarmory, which would try to compete with it defensively in hopes of it stalling it out. Using Roar allows it to fish out for more favorable matchups that it feels more comfortable with. Then of course, its Terra types only enhance it on the battlefield. Terra Fire is really good at avoiding those burn status, which is what it really wants to avoid from things like Moltres or Skeledurge. It also helps avoid the onslaught of fairy types that wish to eliminate it faster, such as Iron Valiant. And then of course, the more generic like Terra type defensively is Terra Steel that it can run, that it usually just wants to just help complement those weaknesses it has to Psychic, Fairy, Flying, etc. as it is a pure fighting type. From this angle, you can clearly see how potent it has been within the tier within the last couple of weeks. It has a large 
large fish net of OU Pokemon, it can pretty much cover defensively, but then it also has a strong complementary move to help eradicate Pokemon it might struggle with as well. Finding one pointed weakness on this Pokemon is pretty difficult, as it has all the tools in its arsenal to cover its backside in most situations. I can also bet though that in most situations, most of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so if you guys are enjoying this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content just like this. I briefly mentioned this Pokemon earlier, but Moltres has suddenly shot back up in OU usage viability. It's at a staggering 5% usage within the OU tier currently, which is just like astounding considering it pretty much fell off once DLC 1 and DLC 2 rolled around. I haven't heard of it since like August of last year, and now it's made another special appearance within OU. Well, it's to no one's surprise, but its valuable stats, typing, and ability have finally come around to make it more relevant once more within the plethora of physical attackers to defend against and help for. The most common set that Moltres has been running of late is the physical defense and flame body set. This has essentially allowed Moltres to play huge and handle against other physical Pokemon such as Landris, Miascarada, Zamazenta, King Gambit, etc. Even with Dragapult as well running around, serving as that utility knife for the team, it can get blocked with its Hex and will o set due to Moltres and its part fire type. Not only because of its massive bulkiness, but Flame Body also allows it to keep distance for these physical beasts, as getting burned for them will quite literally make them pretty useless on the offensive side of things for the rest of the match. It can really put a dent and make it difficult for physical attackers to get any sort of easy momentum throughout the match, which basically helps your team throughout this process. And the things with Moltres as being a wall and only having the ability to dish out itty bitty damage, like no, it can actually do pretty sizable damage with the modest 125 special attack is that from flamethrower to hurricane etc. Not being burned and not being affected by common intimidates etc is what really helps it being a threat if it needs to be on the offensive end of things. Now while physical Moltres is rather popular in and of itself because of its ability and things of that nature, there is another version of special defense which plans to counteract those Pokemon such as Curem, Valiant, or even Enamorous who don't match up that well against this Pokemon. The thing with Moltres is that it's pretty bulky on both sides of the field, so you can tailor to whatever your team desires. It can play special wall effectively and physical wall effectively if need be. Physical is obviously the more popular one though because it can utilize all facets of its gameplay, mostly because its ability is more useful and theoretically blocks more potent attackers within the tier, but special defense can serve as a sizable plug Pokemon if needed be. Probable gripe you would probably have this with this Pokemon is the fact you would have to hold heavy duty boots to obviously avoid hazards becoming a huge problem, but on the flip side without this item, this Pokemon would completely be irrelevant either way due to stealth rocks. Plus it also does have the move roost to keep itself alive if need be, so that is a plus. The common question though that I can already see coming from this is if Moltres can serve as such a great wall in the tier now, why was it not mentioned before? And the answer is actually relatively simple. One, new toy syndrome, new metagame, etc. made it somewhat put it on, on the back end. It wasn't like it was some great god within the tier anyways, so it got lost within the release of God of Fire, the re-release of Moon within the tier, etc. Two, sometimes it takes the metagame for a while for another Pokemon to get going, and the example of Zama Center really proves that. Zamazenta has been in the game since the summer of 2023, but only now is it finding such huge success within the tier, partially because of better Pokemon to surround itself and partially because the metagame favors it more and just pure development from its players. Moltres came from a mix of these reasons as well as with Valkorn as banned, another fire type and flame body user, that void had to be filled by someone, and Moltres came up here since it did thrive earlier within the OU tier before. Granted, this was before the DLC's arrival, so no one really knew how much it can be sustained with this success. Either way, it's been really good now, and if you haven't given it a try already, please be sure to give it a try within the OU tier. I guarantee you this Pokemon will be really valuable for your team moving forward. Anyways though, comment down below your thoughts and any other rising trends you have also noticed within the tier, join the Chompy Discord as well, and as always, thanks for watching the video.